to me enough is Enough is enough. Hey guys, welcome back to the Indie Wrestling Corner with another episode of Under the Ropes. I'm your host as always, the queen of the indies, Tiffany. And I feel like, you know, I can't live up to the real queen. <laughs> the real queen, right? There's no queen. I'm going to put my hood on now. <laughs> Who are you again? I don't know. I mean, you have like 50 million names. <laughs> like, I don't even know. I don't know. I mean, like, I had said this uh, when we had talked about having you come on the podcast. So I'm like, what are we calling you now? Because <laughs> it's like, it's pretty... I don't know. I don't know. It's it's different everywhere. And then, like, people will intertwine it, too. So they'll be like, they'll post that it's Catal, but then, like, though like the commentary will call me Kirk so I don't really know what it is so both yeah. work. <laughs> anyway but it is our queen okay we're gonna go with Casey Kirk today that's what we said that we were gonna do because I was like everybody you know has the different names but oh that's so funny I already see people in the chat what's going on so well you know what I looked up this morning uh it's been two and a half years since you came on this podcast which is crazy. What? Yeah, that was the that was the first time uh, that you were on this podcast, and you came on last year. We did like a Patreon, but that you know that doesn't exist. Um, <laughs> what a wild, two, damn yeah. time flies. Yeah, I was like, how long was it when oh. I was like the last time that we actually did a podcast? So lots changed within wow. two oh. and a half years. Yeah. Uh, so Love if it. <laughs> it's crazy. So if anybody wants to like go back if they didn't watch that interview because there's been obviously a lot of new fans a lot of new fans for this podcast a lot of new fans for you maybe there's still some people that may not be as familiar with you um so i'm gonna cover a couple other things because i saw there was a couple of fan tweets that probably were a little bit covered on the first episode but maybe weren't listening to this podcast then so we'll cover that lightly with um those tweets as well so but this chat's going off let me give some love uh into this chat so uh there's brandon in chat he goes brandon stevens marry white girlfriend yeah. what <laughs> like okay uh mark leslie what's going on he says don't tell anyone i'm not working to watch this oh, okay cool uh <laughs> brad's in the chat he goes yo he goes kathy just got home from school she says hi hi kathy hey. <laughs> april's in the chat screwed with faves okay cool hey. <laughs> uh marcus johnson what's going on he goes oh i'm watching this one love casey uh hey. captain dave what's going on wes says hey ladies call us say hi hope you ladies doing well awesome and uh captain dave says congratulations on winning the icw no holds barred american deathmatch champion uh, champion Thank champ i am so Thank proud of you well deserved well honored so yeah we're gonna get into that because obviously um big weekend um, but let's let's go back. Let's do a little bit of the, the fan tweets before we go into ICW, because obviously that's a big thing that we're going to talk about on this podcast. Okay. So but let's start off with a couple of the fan tweets. So we're going to start off with a uh, shout out to KP. She wants to know, why did you want to become a wrestler? 
Um, I'm sorry, but I wanted to become a wrestler because a guy. <laughs> Aww. <laughs> um, yeah, I like I, I've said it before, but I'll just keep it like brief. Um, I didn't grow up a wrestling fan. I had no idea what wrestling was. I knew who John Cena was. I knew who The Rock was. That was about it. And then on a weekend one day, I had like a mutual group of friends and they're like, you want to go to a wrestling show? And I'm like, okay, like that sounds fun because we were getting bored to like go to the bars and stuff, right? So uh, we went to a wrestling show and was hooked and ended up dating that guy who invited me to the wrestling show. Um, And he wasn't super thrilled of me wanting to be a wrestler. So we dated for like three years. And then the day after we broke up, I signed up for wrestling. (laughs) And here we are. For and you. here we are. And here we are. Years later. Uh, Maurice is in the chat. What's going on? Welcome. Welcome to the stream. Uh, awesome. So our next fan tweet was from Zach. And he said, if you had to pick one match of yours to introduce someone to you, which match would you sell yourself on? Ooh. Oh, man. Oh, my God. That's hard. That's hard. I'm very self-deprecating. So I wish I could just, like, take pieces of every match and just put them together and be like, watch this. I'd probably send them a highlight reel instead of, like, a full match. Um, I don't know. I think, like, my coming out match was the match with me and Danny at ICW, me and Danny DeMonto. So I feel like maybe I would show that. That's a lot, though. Mm -hmm. That's, like, a very, like, I don't know if I would introduce someone to me that way, that aggressively. I don't know. Yeah, you know what? Probably. Because that's me. You know what I mean? That's the most authentic you're going to get. So probably that. It's funny that you say that because I was having a conversation with uh, Laura last night and she was asking me about a couple of wrestlers and she's like, what would you recommend? And I was like, it didn't strike me to her be like in, to sit and watch like deathmatch wrestling. Uh, so I was like, oh, wait, yeah. let me think about this one. I was like, because I said, you're not going to watch deathmatch wrestling. She's like, no, I'll watch it. I was like, oh, OK. You know, so yeah. I guess it's like kind of hard because now that's like the, the thing right now with you uh, is like yeah. the full blown death matches. So yeah. I- like go through the archives and see which ones are like less aggressive for people to watch. <laughs> so the one that you're talking about with Danny DeVato, right, is what the one in Tampa, right? Uh, no, it was at the Heart Ballroom. It was uh, oh that one. Okay, I'm going. Mm-hmm. I'm going back to the one in Tampa. See, there's so many matches. Like obviously, mm-hmm. like I know that you had, and I remember because I remember the crazy spot on the bar. <laughs> Yeah, that he almost, I almost slipped right off him because he was so oiled up. And I was, I remember just being pissed and being like, oh, stop oiling up, bro. Like, I'm taking this high risk move from you. I'm going to slip right off. (laughs) Uh, Zach's in the chat. He goes, hit me with that highlight reel. (laughs) Got you. One day. Awesome. Oh, Nick Papa G. He said, thanks for the house. I love it. Got you. Uh, you. Wes says in the chat, who is one person, guy or lady, you would love to work that you haven't yet? Good question. Um, I get like my dream matches all the time. Um, And I always say like, I have people that I would like, like to work, but I don't really have like high expectations anymore. Cause you know, they say never meet your heroes. Right. So there are some people when I first started that I really wanted to work with and that weren't the nicest of people and that we had terrible chemistry and it was just like such a heartbreak moment. Um, But I do really want to work Lufus. So that's like top up on my list. Um, I still haven't worked Mickey one-on-one, so, like, you know, it, it would be kind of cool to uh, experience that, I think. It's yeah. funny that you say that, because I saw Mick, uh, Mickey just, like, shared our stream. So, thank you, Mickey. Thanks so much. <laughs> <laughs> so awesome. Um, and I know, like, you have also talked about Lucky 13. This needs to happen also. Dude, he's awesome. He's yeah. awesome. There's so many people that I would just love to just get in there for like even five minutes with and just be like, hey, can you just like work around with me just so I could just hopefully get their talent rubbed off on me a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> uh, everything pro wrestling. Conrad, what's up? He said, hey, Casey. Hi, hi Tiff. What's yeah. going on? Give Conrad some love as well. So hey. just some great AW podcasts. Go give him a follow. Um it's it's wild i know like um you know again like this weekend's been full circle you know we we hung out like before we talked about a lot of stuff we talked about everything also like after and again full circle right and we talked about that again you came on the podcast uh i found you because of your match with jimmy lloyd um 
the explosion match. Uh, we did the podcast and we've been close like ever since. So for this weekend is I think it was like meant a lot for a lot of people for a lot of different reasons. Uh, and me, I had to be there to see your moment. And I did go on the balcony and I cried uh, for you. <laughs> so it's, it was a lot. But I heard a lot of people telling me this. They were like, I cried for Casey winning this belt. So talk to, um, you know, us a little bit about, let's go, let's backtrack. Let's go back all the way to once you started with ICW and you, you were talking about that too, that it's crazy because I was there for the first moment of you being at ICW and you mm -hmm. winning the champ. So it's been a while. Uh, so we have this in insane storyline that's been built for a while. So tell us a little bit about that. Uh, yeah, I honestly wouldn't even think it would have come to this to be completely honest so when I started ICW I didn't know what it was going to be like you know um I was asked to go manage Brandon for a show so I thought it was going to be like a one-off like oh they want me and then you know it'll be cool and then I'll probably just never be back um because you never know you never yeah. know when you show up you know like oh are they gonna like me are they not gonna like me so I went, um, it was freezing. It was an outdoor show. That was like October, wasn't it? Yeah, it was in October. This was like oh during the pandemic that when we started being like allowed to like go back outside for outside events. And even that right. was a little nerve wracking because you didn't know if anybody had COVID or, you know, like being around like people. I remember like it was cold and it yeah. was outside the barn because it was supposed to be in the barn and then it got moved outside. I remember. Sounds about right. Yeah. Yep. Um, yeah, it was really cold. I remember, um, yeah, being really cold and being like, okay. And then but right before we went out, Danny asked me to cut a promo, just explaining Brandon and his ridiculous accolades, um, and just try to get him heat and do the, my husband, my husband. I was like, all right, like easy enough. Um, that, yeah, that's kind of where it started. And then it just kind of grew because it was so, I mean, obviously I'm married to Brandon, so it should be natural, but yeah. you see couples that aren't like always like super natural when they're working together, like on camera, you know? Um, and it ended up just working out really well. It was really natural. It was really fun. And then it just like grew into this crazy F the Kirks thing. And that was so fun. Um, yeah. And now we're here, which I don't even know how we got here. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, I got to be able to do some matches. I think after showing people like, this is me, I'm taking these crazy bumps. Like I can handle it. You know, I'm a, I'm a wrestler. And it's funny because when I went into the ICW locker room the first time, not a lot of people even knew that I was trained and um, they just thought I was a valet. So it was, it's kind of cool to see now, you know, yeah. um, how much I've grown, but yeah, like it just kind of turned into this thing where she can do it and everyone trusted me and everyone believed in me. And, uh, it just grew and grew and grew. My confidence grew and grew and grew. And uh, yeah, now I'm, uh, it's, I'm here. It's wild. It's so, it's so wild. Um, you know, and someone like me to watch, you know, where it was to where we are now is, is insane and have this moment that was well-deserved. Uh, and I think a lot of us been wanting this for, a very long time so let me feed off some of these questions into the chat because i know i know that they want to talk about the moment of uh -huh. the shock so mark said what was your first thought after all the adrenaline wore off this on saturday um i don't think the adrenaline wore off until sunday <laughs> <laughs> but i'm spilling coffee um, too <laughs> when it did wear off eventually um I don't know. I think I'm still processing it to be completely honest. Cause I'm just getting a lot of messages, um, especially with, from women, which is the biggest thing for me. Right. Um, just explaining how much it meant to them personally. Uh, and it's, it's a beautiful thing and it makes you realize that what you're doing is important. Um, and it helps me get through all of it. You know, it just, yeah. it's, it's really special. It is really special and it's personal. And I'm, again, I'm trying to process it and like wrap my head around it. And I take like it very seriously. Um, you know, wrestling is whatever it is, but, um, I do take it really seriously and I'm, I'm really honored that I can impact other people and make them happy. And that's the most important thing. So, yeah. 
It was it was nice to see all the fans uh, being behind you during during the match. It was big pop uh, when you first came out, and then obviously when you know you won the belt and watching the building explode. So totally insane, total great moment uh, that we all got to see. Uh, I I said that was gonna put you in a bubble, but I need to put you in a bubble after this. <laughs> And be like, oh, so Coco. hi, Coco. <laughs> gonna wait for her dad. That's up there. that's my friend. That's my friend. Um, that's too funny. All right, let's see. I'm gonna try to get all these questions into the chat. Uh, Mike joined. He said hi. Wes says I just want to say I love seeing Chucky and Chloe cheering for you on because I know you and Chloe's favorite because it's all about family. Yes. Um, Ma another Matt came into the chat. Hey, Tiffany. Hey, Casey. Hope you guys are doing well. Thank you both for all that you do for wrestling. Nah, thank the queen over hey. here. Like, you know, <laughs> oh, nah. everything she puts her body through and, uh, you know, all the blood and all the oh. glass and all that fun stuff. So crazy. It's so fun. <laughs> oh, yeah. Real, real fun. All right. Let's talk about another match because here we go. So, like, here you go, Zach. If, if you haven't watched this match, you can go watch this one. Uh, another match I want to talk about is you and Marcus Matters at NFW. Okay? So, I feel like this was, like, a good, you know, match to talk about. There's so there's so many matches, you know, we could talk about. And, obviously, there's ones we're not going to talk about about promotions that don't exist anymore. Um, but, <laughs> Big fail. Uh, nah, but, you know, there was a lot of great moments with that, too. And I know I brought up that, that I was like, I got to watch. Uh, and we'll just slide off of it. And then I'll move on. And we'll go back to the Marcus. But, like, you winning the crown. Brandon coming out. You know, having that special moment with you. And then, again, Brandon putting the ICW belt on you, too. It was really cool. Just, like, you know, these moments yeah. that are just very important. But, anyway, backtrack. Back to NFW. You and Marcus Matters. Yes. So, you get to work, like, you know, a son. Kind of like. Work my kid. Yeah. And uh, I know, like, you told me that Marcus was, like, very impressed. Uh, like you said, like, people, right, don't think that you're trained and that you could really wrestle yeah. you guys. I don't even know if he was, like, impressed, but, yeah, he was like, wow, like, you're good. I was like, thank <laughs> you. Um, yeah, like, I, I do more than deathmatch. Um, so people, people don't realize, like, I was trained like a cookie-cutter TV wrestler. Mm -hmm. So I know all the tricks, you know. I know the little things. Like, I'm, I'm fully trained. I have full fundamentals. <laughs> um, very important before doing deathmatch wrestling, by the way, yeah. to have – fundamentals and know what you're doing um but yeah working marcus i was so nervous i was so nervous because it's like this kid is speedy and fast and flippy and calls all these crazy things and i'm i could be like no flips no jumps no top rope i was just like joking i'm like none none nothing it's just gonna be great no but we ended up doing some stuff like that but um we got to make it like a little bit of a pg hardcore match which was cool um and made me more comfortable a little bit more at my alley um and we just had fun and that was one of like my favorite matches i've had um like regular matches i've had uh he blew me up pretty good um but i knew that i was expecting it um but yeah oh he hit me with a rubber chicken and busted me open and i was like how do you bust someone open with a rubber oh no it was a dinosaur it was the dinosaur <laughs> It was like a giant blow up dinosaur, but it had like lead feet. I was like, what? It looked, like he swung it. It was like a brick hit me. And I was like, am I bleeding? Like, I think I, he like clipped me in the ear with it or something. And I just remember like, I was like, really? But yeah, it was really fun. <laughs> I remember that. That was because uh, people were bringing in the aliens and the rubber chickens. Oh, yeah. Alien. You know and there what? was a dinosaur. There, it was, was a dinosaur. It was okay. a dinosaur. It was, it was a global object. That yeah. was uh, Melissa brought that in because of all the stuff that was going on because the aliens were being brought in, the rubber chickens and stuff like that. But that's on IWTV yeah. if you guys haven't watched it. So definitely go check out that match. I was like, this one we have to talk a little bit about. So uh, I saw there was a question in the chat. Hold on a sec. Zach says, has Casey taken on Masha? That'd be hell of a fight. Well, I know I've seen in the scramble with you guys. Uh, yeah, I, I actually... There. Yeah, I actually wrestled her at WWR years ago. Mm -hmm. So I think that match might be up on IWTV. I'm almost positive that it is. Um, but it's been a long time, and we have both grown crazy amounts. So we're trying to get it to happen again, possibly a death match. So mm -hmm. 
hopefully it happens, but I, I adore Masha. Mm -hmm. Uh, Mark says, if it's not too personal, what was written on your wrist tape for Saturday? Yeah. Well, I'm going to get emotional. Um, so I had JR on my left for Jimmy Rave, and then I had MC on my right for Mark Screen. Uh, two people, uh, although we had different levels of relationships, uh, meant and mean a whole lot to me in my career. Jimmy Rave um, helped train me. He was always supporting me, constantly sending me um, – links and clips to watch um of things to do or um ideas for matches like every day every day i would get stuff from him um he was just such a big part of believe he helped me believe in myself he believed in me and brennan tenfold um one of the first to really like vocalize that they believed in us you know what i mean um and just really wanted the best for us and marcus um unfortunately we started building a friendship a little bit later on um, because we just weren't around on the same shows and stuff like that. Um, but he would tell me that I was the female version of him. And uh, when we became friends, he would message me all the time and just be like, you know, you're doing great things. I'm so proud of you. And um, he was so excited for my barefoot match at another promotion we're not going to talk about. But um, he was just such a fun and inspiring and just beautiful person so they both have a big big place in my heart and i felt them both with me um on saturday night which was really really special it's important definitely uh brad said no more masha versus kathy's favorites <laughs> all right no 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 crying no more crying <laughs> No more, no more crying. <laughs> All right, let's talk about this because I feel like we got to touch about the whole fuck the Kirks and the love of the Kirks and like the flip flop and then watching how it went from fuck the Kirks and then the fans just going love the Kirks. Like, so it's funny how like that became like a thing and it's still a constant hashtag that's mm -hmm. constantly out on social media. So any favorite moments from it or any moments of like what the fuck? Um. It was just all fun. Yeah. The Fuck the Kirks movement was, I mean, people are still tweeting me, Fuck yeah. the Kirk. Um, so you guys suck, whoever's doing that. No, <laughs> um, love the Kirk. No. Yeah. Um, it was just fun. It's fun to be bad. It's fun to be, like, goofy and just not care. And to get that reaction is, like, there's nothing like having people hate you so much. It's so easy just to get them riled up. Yeah. Like, it is Fun. The, the whole thing was fun and then love the kirks is still fun but like it, it happened pretty quick i feel like it not even that it happened quick and that it happened suddenly it was just like hate you hate you hate you love you it was like <laughs> there was no in between like for me to process what was happening i was like why what did we do <laughs> it's like I, I feel like people just started feeling bad for me that i kept getting annihilated by every <laughs> on the roster like, and i watched like when you know, we go back to the ICW, that October show, and when you came out and cut the promo and and watching the fan base, and I'm like, damn it, I was like, that's my friend up there. I was like, I can't. I was like, and like, like I, I didn't even know who knew me. It was the yeah. first time I went out there, and like, yeah, it's like Jersey locals, so some people probably knew who I was, but like, I didn't even say anything, yeah. and I just got booed out of that place, and I was like, oh, this is going to be so easy. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> it was hard to like me watch it. And like, I know, like I posted a clip that because uh, you told me you're like, you better boo me. And I'm like, oh, I can't boo you. And like me and April were there. We're like, we can't boo you. So like, oh, yeah, you hear yeah. it on the video. We're like, um, boo. <laughs> like, you know, like, we're like we can't boo her. That's our friend. Like we can't. Um, but then like people were getting like really like twisted. They were like, bitch, fuck you, bitch. And all oh, shit. yeah. People got nasty. Like, my DMs were gross. Oh, were no. Gross. But it's, it's part of it. It's pretty fun. It's, uh, it's, jeez. Uh, it's a character, guys. Relax. <laughs> uh, Chucky's in the chat. He goes, we're always been hashtag love the Kirk. So what's up, Chuck? How are you? Hey. <laughs> awesome awesome all right another one that i feel like you also got a big pop and it's fun because it's like i like touching base on like the big pops the jcw show uh the stampede that like whole the bunkhouse stampede oh man that was a fun pop when you you came out i don't know like i think the fans been wanting this for you to come over to jcw uh and i always love the rumbles the, you know 
yeah. that happened at JCW. Uh, but yeah, like, yeah, tell us a little wild. about that. That was like a wild. I wasn't expecting any of that. I was in the back of Steve Scott's, and Steve Scott's telling me he's like, "Wait, will you wait till you hear this pop? Wait till you hear." It. And I was like, "Shut up!" And then I went out there and was like, "Why?" Like, it still doesn't like resonate with me that like people enjoy what I do. Mm-hmm. Like now a little bit more, but like again, like I'm so I'm trying to be more self aware and appreciate myself more and self love and self care and everything else. But like, it's so wild when so many people are just so happy to see you and to see what you do. It's just crazy. Yeah. yeah. It doesn't feel real. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, uh, loving the chat. Oh, okay. That, now you got to start her up, Conrad. He wants... Oh, God, she, no, no, no. It's good. He wants you to... He goes, your thoughts on Luca and where did the love for the Mavs start? <laughs> well, <laughs> how much time we got? No. Um... Yeah, so, well, I love Luca, but my background on my phone, which I'm going to show you right now if it works, is Maxi Kleba, because that's yeah. my number one love. Mm-hmm. But um, I have been a basketball fan, NBA fan. I, I just love the game of basketball my whole entire life. Used to be a Lakers fan. Went, went. That didn't go well. Um, but I lived out in L.A. for a while, and I was like, oh, cool. Actually, like, people go to basketball games here. So... Um, was a Lakers fan, and then when I met Brandon, he's like, oh, let's watch basketball, and I was like, okay, and, like, we both hadn't watched it in a while, and he's like, I'm a Mavericks fan, and I'm like, oh, okay, and then he turned on the TV, and I immediately fell in love with this team, um, the underdogs, the hungry young boys who are ready to just put it all out on the line, I was like, those are my boys, um, and, like, literally just absolutely fell in love with all of them, what they represent, the stuff they do in the community. They're just, like, all around amazing, and they're very talented players. So that's why I got my Mavs fan for life right here. And when I got it done, my mom thought it said MILF. So she was horrified. <laughs> but it doesn't say MILF. It's serious. Like, I've been in her house of her watching basketball and her screaming at the television. I've watched it, like, plenty. Yeah. I still told her, like, I got to go with her to a game. And I was like, I'm not a basketball fan, but I will – Put on a jersey for her. I will go, but she owes me barbecue food. That's it. Like, you know, I'll do whatever. I'm here for it. So, and then the million of jerseys and all that shit that she's got. (laughs) And I keep getting more. Like, I have a full closet of just, like, everything you could possibly think of, I have. Times probably three. It's yeah. it's serious. Uh, Carlos is in the chat. What's up? How are you? April says, since you have been focusing more on deathmatch wrestling, has the dream changed on being signed to a bigger company, or do you want to focus more on becoming the best deathmatch wrestler? Uh, good question. Um, yeah, the original goal when I first started wrestling was obviously, you know, do it as a career and be signed and have a big platform. Um, now I'm just like having so much fun that I just am am enjoying what I'm doing. And I'm like, okay, well, if this is where I stop, this has been more than enough for me. Um, I just want to continue to break down walls and open doors for women in wrestling and women in deathmatch wrestling. Um, and I just love how it's grown and it's been more like widely accepted. So if I just do this, like that's totally cool. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, Chucky says, Casey was literally the only way Chloe was going to a live ICW show. She was so nervous to go and see Casey. I really felt gave her the courage to go. And I'll surprise Chloe at her birthday. Chloe could go anywhere to see her. <laughs> He's laughing. Oh, I love awesome. that. Awesome. I'm so glad you had fun. Well, you know what? Let's talk about this because, like, it is really a um, wholesome moment because. Oh, oh sorry. <laughs> no, My you're you're fine. So just went and picked up the food from the food shopping, and she's in the bag. Oh. <laughs> All right, so let's talk about this because I feel like this is such a important, you know, thing about you know you being a real inspiration out there for the little girls. I mean, you got Chloe. I mean, you had my goddaughter Kathy and everything like that. And I can only imagine all the other messages that you get, you know, you know, even just like for women or you know little girls or you know teenagers or whatever it is that you do what you do. So I always say like that's your wrestling with positivity, right there of even the things that you have done and even like going to birthday parties for like Chloe and stuff like it just means a lot so I just want you to elaborate like on that uh yeah I mean it's crazy it's crazy and and like I said before I still can't really even process it and I take it very 
seriously and I feel like I do have a big responsibility to just tell people they can do whatever they want. Like whether you're, you know, 50 years old, whether you're 13 years old or six, you know what I mean? Like you have your whole life ahead of you. If you want to do something, go do it. Like it doesn't matter. There's no timeline for happiness. You know, you have to just create it. Uh, and I'm still learning that too, you know, like I have been chasing this happiness thing my whole entire life. Where do I fit in? What's going to make me happy? What's going to bring me success in a way that is going to work for me? So if I can just show people like just stop what you're doing and do what you love, like that's the most important thing. When you're happy, everything around you changes. Your life changes, your relationships change, and they all change for the better. So, you know, um, if I can help people do that and – they can just live out their lives to the fullest. I'm like, hell yeah, because I'm still working on that too. So, yeah, oh, that's so great. So many, so many great moments, and that's why I always like to share that on the podcast with the wrestling with positivity. So that's definitely a lot of those moments that you had, and I you know, like Kathy, like you winning, and then like even like the the, the photo of blowing kisses to each other, like when you won the crown, and you know, it's just it's, those those are yeah. just such wholesome moments. Um, I, I love yeah. witnessing. Did I do, do what? Did you did freeze? freeze? You did freeze. <laughs> Shut the camera off and then turn it back on to see if that works. Okay. Sorry, guys. This is really my life. There you go. You're good. It could have just been. <laughs> oh, okay. Wait. Excellent. Now it froze again. <laughs> I'm frozen again? Yeah. <laughs> okay, hold on. The joy of technology, pretty much. Turn video off video on okay well, didn't okay any yeah you're Am I, yeah okay. you're good <laughs> okay you're, you're good you're good you're good all right cool all right let's do some of these fan tweets because we got a, like a bunch of fan tweets from you all right well i mean i know papa g was in the chat but he put a tweet out he wanted you to put him over <laughs> papa g sucks well there you go no i'm not I, no i if, if i know he was joking but like yeah. honestly he got me through my first ever single step match which is what which was the jimmy lloyd match um, so he, I just love him. I love him. I trust it. You know, you yeah. meet people out there that you trust. Yeah. I didn't really know Jimmy that well, but I knew, I knew Papa G. So, um, it made, just made me feel more comfortable. So thanks Papa. There you go. Love it. You can check out that interview. We had him on the podcast as well. So you can go back and listen to that. Uh, next fan tweet from Matt. He goes, this will be fun. So Casey, how much of whirlwind has been this past year? ICW going from being the most hated to the most love and that the people wanted you as champion. Crazy, surreal, crazy. Um, it just shows that hard work pays off and I'm just really over the moon that everyone's happy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's see. Fan tweet. Good cop, bad cop. Okay. I, you know, he loves the mess with everybody. He said, would Casey be an anagram of Axia? What question do we not ask you in this interview that has given us a really interesting answer? If you choose to answer that question, that's up to you. <laughs> okay. Is that English? <laughs> If it's English, I'll answer it. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. He just... Or if there's a meaning, I'll answer I, it. I don't know. I, I'll answer whatever. I saw him in the time. chat. If, like, if you want to elaborate more, you're more than I welcome. Ask, ask me something. Go for it. <laughs> um, so another fan tweet from Dom. He says, hope to meet you one day. And he wants to know what your favorite book is. My favorite book. Good question um i hope i meet you too and my favorite book is the alchemist again like it's a life journey book and it's i had to read it i think in like seventh or eighth grade for the summer and i was like oh i gotta read this and it ended up being like the best thing ever so awesome so i feel I, i'm waiting for like his response when he listens to this podcast that what he's gonna say because he likes to over analyze what the books mean uh and he's a big reader so i'm really curious uh yeah. and you know maybe maybe i'll put it out i'll clip this and then you know when he gives me an answer we'll we'll give the answer back on that yeah, book club yes i yeah. love reading i wish i had more time to read but i do love reading oh anything particular like anything like you want to read anything anything i just love reading uh, my friend carrie just gave me like two books to read and I haven't had like a lot of time so she gave me like one romance like beautiful love story one which I'm like super pumped about and yeah. but right now I'm like reading like a murder mystery or something 
could yeah. be fun. Well, since we're talking about books, we could also like go into the whole thing about TV series, and I, which you watch a lot, uh, besides wrestling, you know. So, uh, and I know that, like, usually, like, right, she's... you go in the fridge. Sorry, no. <laughs> <laughs> my life it's always chaotic and there's never okay continue <laughs> no you're good uh so yeah tv series any like recommendations anything like i watch so much trash that people wouldn't even want to like watch what i would recommend um what do i watch that's like good? i don't know i feel like i finished like all like the major tv series that everyone watched you know like the viral ones what are you telling me of oh, 90 day fiance brennan's telling me to say to share but um <laughs> Yeah, we do watch 90 Day Fiance. We we, we dabble in that. Mm -hmm. Euphoria, um, because that was the big thing that you guys euphoria. were. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, I went on a little. Yeah, I feel like everybody, when they start watching like these shows, like the Euphorias or the Stranger Things or like the Squid Game, and it becomes like this crazy viral sensation mm -hmm. and everyone's like sucked in. Yeah, I, I'm the same way. I get sucked into everything. I was trying to find a Hellfire Club shirt for like ever and they were sold out forever and like now i see that they're back online but like it's just like crazy it's yeah. crazy well i've been telling her that she needs to get onto the hands made tale that it's so dark and twisty uh so i want her to watch that because it's really really good and i just got it into the fourth season and the fifth season starts this wednesday um but i didn't realize because it's on hulu that it's a weekly thing uh so i'm kind of yeah. like mad uh you know because i need to like i'm not there yet but i mean i just started the fourth season this morning but yeah. dark and twisty, I'm telling you, right up your alley. Uh, you're gonna love. You're gonna love that. So uh, more love into this chat. I see you guys. Josh says that first CZW bump was when I became a real fan. Uh, let's see, Steven. Hello. Questions: As you have now ascended the mountain and holding the title at the peak, what is next for the champ? Death. No. Uh... Oh my god. We really got dark and twisty. Sorry. <laughs> I'm kidding. I don't have a filter sometimes, and it just like word vomit. Um, what's next for me? I don't know. I, I'm trying to maybe. I'm just trying to be mindful, live every day in the moment, enjoy today. Today, Brandon's going to be wrestling for the Danny Havoc Hardcore Championship. So, I my brain is there. Like, let's go. Um, I'm not going to say. Well, yeah, that's political. I'm just very excited to go watch Brandon wrestle tonight. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's endless. I think the ceiling is endless. I haven't reached my ceiling yet. I'm just going to keep going higher and higher and higher. Yeah. Oh, man, Steve, thank you so much. Drop $10. Congrats to the champion. Thank you so much. So awesome. Thank you. I really appreciate that. Uh, Donald says, how has it been to work with Darren McCarthy? Uh, DMAC. I love that man. <laughs> I love that man. It's uh, it's another surreal thing to be like, what? I am working with a legend, and he's just so game for everything, and he's so down to earth, and one of the most generous, like literally one of the most generous and kind people I've ever met in my entire life, which is nuts considering his stature and like his, you know, reputation of just being this hockey god. So yeah, he's awesome. Um, so you guys are funny in the chat. So April. The podcast, he's like it, it behind. You can, the you can pop in. You can pop in. I don't care. Oh, you can no, come we're in. not. We're not talking about that. Okay, continue. <laughs> oh no, <laughs> don't get me canceled. All right, yeah, <laughs> don't. Not, no one's canceled. Don't, don't get me canceled. Uh, April said Ca Casey should watch F Boy, uh, yeah, Fuck Boy Island since Tip don't want to. I am not watching your what fucking twisted fucking dating like about fuck boys and oh reality show. Yeah. That's, oh, I'm into. I, she's into whatever. that. I love reality television. It's probably my favorite genre. So yeah, I'm. Uh, I'm good. Chad, what's up, uh, Tiffany and uh, Casey? How are you? Uh, cool. I saw another one. Mike in the chat says, "Does Casey watch House of Dragons?" I don't. That's like a Game of Thrones thing, right? Uh, yeah, that's the new one. I think I gotta. I gotta get. I gotta catch up on that too. I think there's a couple episodes out. Yeah, I never got into Game of Thrones, and I know people are going to hate me and probably never watch my wrestling again if I say that, but I watched, like, the first episode um, because Brennan told me Jason Momoa was in it, so then I watched it for him, and then we just, like, never continued it. I don't know. I'm very ADD. Very, very ADD. I cannot watch a show that's, like, very long. Yeah. Like, I need it, you know, short and sweet or crazy stuff, you know, like... Mm -hmm. 
it's very hard to keep my attention for longer than 15, 20 minutes. <laughs> uh, Mark says all those other deathmatch titles to collect. Ooh, do you have eye on anything else since you like brought that up? Uh, belts are heavy and I really rather not carry it around. <laughs> You're supposed to say yes. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, Brad, Brad said, since you weren't a fan before getting into wrestling, what made you look at deathmatch wrestling and decided that was what you wanted to do? Yeah. Um, well, the first show that introduced me to wrestling that first like weekend was a hardcore show, um, mm. which is crazy. Again, full circle. It just, everything seems to be popping back in my life. Um, I never thought I was actually going to do it, but I really enjoyed watching it. Mm -hmm. um, so after I kind of was introduced to wrestling, I started watching a lot of ECW. I was obsessed with Tommy Dreamer. I loved his evolution mm -hmm. of this, like, pretty, like, tamed baby face, like, boy, like, clean shaven, you know, like that jock, care, you know, jock kind of guy that looked like your all-American boy. And then he grew into this powerhouse, psychotic, you know, monster and i i was so like drawn to that and i almost feel like i'm like nowhere near anything like tommy dreamer he's you know but yeah. like it's so crazy that like now it's it's kind of doubling as like oh i was this you know i took it really really slow and i i grew up to what i am now which is like wild that's awesome uh, i see all you guys hey we love casey uh greetings from another poughkeepsie native shout out chase Woo, <laughs> uh steven says what do you think 10 year old casey would think of the badass you became oh that's a good one. Oh man um she would probably be like what are you doing you psychopath um i don't know i don't know i i think she would be impressed in a way not in like a wrestling kind of way i think just impressed about how She's gone through so much and can turn it around into a positive thing and a growth thing rather than a let it cut you down thing, if that makes any sense. Mm -hmm. It's pretty cool to watch. It really is. Um, let's see what else. I, I see all you guys. Okay, April says, when are we getting you versus Charlie Evans? It's in demand, she said. I would like to. <laughs> yeah. I was like, these things are not up to us, guys. Yeah. I mean, sometimes they are, but like politics, yay, whatever. I will work wherever pays me, minus a very few places for obvious reasons. Right. Like, I'm not going to go somewhere where they're going to have like, you know, you guys know. Yeah. But like, if you're going to pay me, I'm going to work there. Um, so that does not apply to the Kirks. <laughs> so if it happens, it happens. Great. But we'll see. Yeah. Uh, hi, uh, uh, Yalato. Like, I know I'm saying it wrong. I'm sorry. Uh, Veronica says, hi. Eva says, two of my hi, faves. Hi. hi. How are you guys? Uh, all right. Let's see. Let me do some of these fan tweets because I see you guys in chat. But let me grab some of the fan tweets, too. Alyssa says, what match or matches do you recommend wrestlers to study? She says, can be from anywhere. Everything. <laughs> Honestly. Yeah. Seriously. I mean, you can go, I remember when I first started, Dan Barry told me to watch all Malenko for, you know, the technical aspect of it. Then there's other people that you can watch for the storytelling aspect. Then there's other people you can watch for the cool tricks if you want to, you know, put that in. There's, you should be watching as a wrestler just literally everything. Because mm -hmm. you're, you're going to learn something from everything. Even if the match sucks, you're going to learn that's what not to do or I don't want to look like that or whatever it is there's always different things you can pull and just watching it is the best way one of the best ways to learn right right yeah i know like she's always looking for particular matches to study since she's training so we'll um send some, we'll send you some good stuff there you go there you go all right fan tweet from john he had a couple of questions so i know like i'm gonna ask this and i know like we can go back if you want more details, you could go back into the first interview because I know you and me went into depth about this. So it said, what was your first reaction of the news of the exploding ring of CZW? Uh, like when I first, when they pitched it? Yeah. Um, so the first time it was supposed to be, we knew we were doing the storyline. Brandon and Jimmy, they were leading up to Cage of Death, so it was this really like drawn out storyline. Um, so we knew we wanted to have a match together, me and Jimmy, because it would just be like full circle again. 
Um, originally, we we're going to do four corners of pain, I think. Um, and then Jimmy said, well, why don't we do squared circle sacrifice? Because mm-hmm. him and Brandon had done it literally a year right before that on the same show. Um, so we just thought it would be like a, a full, complete storytelling aspect. And then, honestly, I don't even remember how the explosion came up in the conversation. Brand, do you remember how someone decided to pitch an explosion? <laughs> how the explosion was pitched. Do you even remember? It was Connor? But was it Pitt? Okay, so Connor Claxton decided I was having an explosion match, I guess. But I don't... It wasn't Jimmy being like, we should explode. I don't know. Somebody <laughs> said we should explode and then pitched it. And I was like, well, if we're doing it, we're doing it. Um. So, yeah. Honestly, that's so funny that I don't even remember, like, how that specific thing. Mm-hmm. I knew the match and I knew the squared circle sacrifice. But then the last thing was the explosion. So. Right, right. Somehow someone pitched it. Yeah. So if you want to know more details about that, like I said, you know, you could go back to the first episode because I know we went into debt with, with Oh, that good. Match. So then the answer is probably on Yeah, so you, you can go back to the... And it might be completely different, so I don't know. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll repost the, the, the first interview with her so you guys can see it uh, if you haven't watched it already. All right, his other question was, do you get more nervous for your matches or Brandon's? Oh, good question. I've never gotten that before. Um, I'm neurotic neurotic before my matches um i get very very nervous watching him though uh just just as a wife you know not even like i know he's like one of the best wrestlers i've ever seen in my life not just saying that because we're married um so i know he's going to be safe he's going to take care of himself and he's going to take care of the other person and 90 percent of the time i trust the other person too so it's not usually a big deal but i get really nervous because things happen and you know you see when you're working with glass and you're working with weapons and stuff, it's just so unpredictable. You never really know. So I'm just thinking like, Oh, I hope he's okay. Cause me, I have a really high pain tolerance. I can take care of myself. Uh, for him, I just get that wife worry. So it's a different type of worry, I guess. Yeah. That's uh this was like a first, like as, as long as we've been friends and obviously like I know, you know, you get nervous and like, I always know like the, the, the joke is, is she going to target shopping in the morning? Um, so anyway, so like, I know that we ended off that I was saying that this was like a first time that I pretty much got to come backstage and see you right before your match and seeing how like nervous, uh, you are like, I always knew you were nervous, but to actually witness it and see it, uh, is, is a lot. So I definitely vouch for the sense of, I know that it's, you know, you get really nervous right before a match and then you come out and then the adrenaline kicks in. So yeah. Yeah, I get neurotic, neurotic, not even a day before the match, not even a week, probably like a month. And then I have to like mentally prepare myself. But I did get some of the best advice I've ever gotten in my career. Um, And this person told me in a very nice way to stop being neurotic and just enjoy the ride. Um, Just enjoy what you're doing. Like you're here for a reason. Um, regardless if you believe it, it or not, you know, you, you're here for, for a reason you earned it. So, uh, go out and just make the most of it. So that meant a lot. So I'm trying to be in that mindset way more. Awesome. Awesome. All right. Let me finish those fan tweets from John. I apologize. Um, so he's his next one. He had a couple of, so he said least favorite weapon to be hit with. To be hit with. <laughs> it's like to land in or to get hit with. Um, I don't know. I think just my least favorite weapon in general is carpet strips. Mm-hmm. Uh, they really mess you up. Uh, no one really knows what they are when you look at them. They just look like little pieces of wood, so they don't look scary, but they're covered in nails that really hurt, uh, and they mess your body up really bad. So I do not like carpet strips. Yeah, I can. Uh, I mean, I don't like any of them when you guys get hurt, yeah. but like, yeah. yeah, that one, that one's bad. And I mean, I feel like some people don't like the gusset plates either because I feel like those are a little worse i mean i don't have like i have crazy pain tolerance um and gussets don't bother me as much i mean yeah anything pointy going into your head it's not going to feel good but um yeah i don't i don't mind so much pointy i just don't like when things are dragging in your skin and like they really mess you up you know right right yeah it's it's a lot so i give you a lot of credit for doing everything that you do and 
to see all the marks and the bruises and well you say even like even the gussets in the hair and it's it's a lot uh his next question is worst bump you ever taken oh man i got a few um off the top of my head one of the worst pains i've ever felt in my entire life was getting power bombed by paro into a sea of nothing yeah. um he said that the fans were going to catch me and i was a heel at the time and they parted ways and i went straight to the concrete and i swear that was the most one of the most painful things i've ever experienced <laughs> oh <laughs> oh man yeah i remember that 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 was fun you bruised your ass uh so shame on the fans the yeah, yeah i bruised the, the, my whole body oh my god we went to disney the next day and i i think i had a black eye also or brendan had a black eye and i was limping and it was just people were looking at us like we're nuts <laughs> oh jeez that that's got to be fun too. like you come out of a show you're full of blood you know a person that's like walking down the street doesn't know anything about wrestling never mind the fact deathmatch wrestling and then it's like did you guys get into a fight like yeah we go into wawa and it's disgust like now i won't go into wawa because people are gonna like start calling the cops like yeah. afterward so i'll like the the least bloody person will go in and get get all the food but like yeah the looks are are real and like I don't blame anybody if I saw someone looking like that at Wawa at three in the morning two in the morning I'd be like what's going on over there <laughs> it's crazy <laughs> crazy all right his last question uh <laughs> and it's funny uh because this story was brought up before on the reps podcast he said going back to dojo war days did you get revenge on Nate Wallace for ripping your underwear during a match I have not and honestly that's I, I'm still laughing from, from when that happened. Um, that was just so good. Um, no, we've never wrestled the rep. And I'm like, that would be so sick. That would be so sick. So that's on my on my to-do list. I hope that someone can can book the Kirks and the rep. I think that'd be sick. That'd be fun. I feel yeah. like like we need to have that. So, all right, who's putting it on for us? You know, the promoters, if you're listening to this podcast, <laughs> make it happen. Uh, Mark said, since Kip brought it up recently, what are the chances of the office reunion happening? Hey, I, I got my suit in the closet. I got my I got my business suit in the closet, so I'm ready for for it to be taken out of retirement. But I don't know. Got to see what the other fellas other fellas want to do, and if uh, someone is ballsy enough to reunite the office, make it happen. I, I'm here for it. Uh, yeah, I just shout out for Squeak on Instagram because they also put a tweet out because I saw it this morning and I forgot that I had that tweet. It was craziest bump you ever taken so far. So. Uh, we, we covered that also. So, um, so actually it's funny because it's figures that a freaking crash, like right before, like comes, I'm coming to an end. And then I know that you got to head over to H2O. So let's, let's end that on uh, a good note. So I always like to end it off for those, you know, there's so many wrestlers that listen to this podcast, whether they're training or they're starting out. Uh, what's a piece of advice? I mean, we actually, this the last one, but since so much has happened since the last two years, is there anything else, like since you're more seasoned, uh, that you would like to share, uh, you know, to that inspired uh, amateur wrestler? Just, so, uh, it's going to probably be the same. I probably said this, but it's really, really important. Um, surround yourself with genuine people that you can trust and that doesn't mean it has to be in wrestling just surround yourself with people who are going to support you and who believe in you and who want the best for you um and lean into that when you need them because it's really 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 hard this whole thing wrestling is really hard mentally physically but like really mentally so just go in and believe in yourself and listen to people who want to help you and just have fun, really have fun and enjoy the experience because like I'm going on with like six years, like it just flies by. So just really try to enjoy your experiences and just soak in everything you possibly can from it. The good, the bad, the ugly, um, because it really is going to be like a life changing thing. So that's good advice. Um, actually, Brad's got a good question in here. So he says, when you plan a match with your opponent, do you like to plan out every spot beforehand? Or are you on the fly kind of wrestler? <laughs> <laughs> this, uh, this is very this resonates with me a lot um, I am one of those people who likes to plan out everything my opponents 
nine times out of 10 are people who will call everything on the fly. So um, a little inside, John Wayne Murdoch likes to avoid me about until about 10 minutes before the match happens, no matter, no matter what. And he, and he, he knows this and he thinks it's funny because he likes, you know, I, I'm squirming and I'm sitting in the, in the locker room going like this and, you know, rocking and, and, uh, yeah. So, um, I, I can do both. <laughs> I don't have crazy spot fest matches, so I don't really need to be calling a crazy amount of stuff anyway. Um, I personally, my preference, I would like to go over it a trillion times. Um, but I just, I have not been blessed in the last probably year to go over anything. So. <laughs> I've witnessed go. that. <laughs> That's a little nerve wracking though. So uh, yeah, it's, it, it makes me feel like I'm going to stroke out and throw up at the same time. So do you think that it happens more with the male wrestlers or do you, is this also kind of like happen with female wrestlers too? Um, it depends. It depends. I, it's a lot with deathmatch because deathmatch, there's a lot of different things that you can just, you don't need to call a, a trillion things in a death. You know, you have your big things that you work up to. Um, so deathmatch is, yeah, you can call a lot of stuff on the fly. Um, probably, yeah, it was probably just the deathmatch stuff that I do that people just like really calling stuff on the fly. The other stuff, tag team stuff, everyone loves calling everything. But yeah, for deathmatch wrestlers, no. <laughs> awesome awesome real real fun so but yeah. um yeah so all right so like i said you know like i know i know we're pinched on time and i'm really sorry that you know the Perfect. computer decided to crash and everything like that so just for anybody that's listening to this later i'm gonna merge everything uh together so with that being said uh where else like you know what's coming up for you that's already announced that you could share that, you know, people can come see you or watch you on like whether it's IWTV or anything like that. I know somebody had asked, I think it was Steve or in the chat earlier, if I couldn't remember right, he was saying that, you know, since you've been on JCW, is GCW in the future? Like, um, you know what? We'll see. I got, I got my DMs open. I'm ready for a yo. So if uh, the yo comes, the yo comes. If the yo doesn't come, then someone else will maybe shoot a hay. But, uh coming up let's see let's see what we got going on um so we got some stuff coming up one a couple things weren't announced um and then yeah icw we're doing la we're we're doing a million we're doing newark again we're doing all this kind of stuff so just just keep up with my socials because a lot of stuff that we're doing has not been announced for the next like few weeks so Okay, yeah, I saw, like, also WrestleRave had, like, shared, like, when you won the moment, they were saying whether it's love the Kirks or fuck the Kirks, you know, well-deserved. WrestleRave, that WrestleRave, they're not <laughs> the Kirks train. They got to get on the Kirks train, bro. Oh, man, get on the train, guys. You yeah. too. <laughs> um, yeah, so tell everybody where they could follow you if they're not, what they should be following you, like, where they could follow you and merch. I know, like, you know, people can come, um, you know, message you for for merch or your table but there's also like new merch out there's one on yeah. the iwtv shop, yeah shop iwtv we have our cool like spooky Coraline vibes um design and then on deathmatch worldwide is where most of our stuff is and then we also are selling a exclusive long sleeve of that Coraline cool design um so we're taking pre-orders for that now and then just socials catal casey it should be if you type in casey catal it's probably pop up uh, I don't have, I, maybe I should change it to Kirk. I don't know. But for, for right now, it's. <laughs> who are it's, you again? Who, who are you? Who are you? I'm, I'm changing all of it. I'm just going to like have one name and like just change. I'm just going to be Casey. That's it. There you go. <laughs> K and a C. So no one messes up the spelling either. <laughs> it's fun watching that. <laughs> like everybody... <laughs> all right. I'm like, I'm tagged in this. Like, yeah. it's not difficult. Just copy what it, well, whatever. Yeah. Uh, Demay says, congratulations, Justin. Yeah. He goes, Thanks. he goes, how are you? I haven't seen you in forever. Amanda yeah. says, hello. So, uh, but yeah, so all those links, they're in the description. Go give her a follow. Go see her at the shows. Bring her, bring her some stuff. Anything particular. Yeah. Bring her Forky. Yeah, I love Forky. She loves Forky. I have Forky here. I have a Forky that she gave me. Forky. 
Of course you can. <laughs> you know, that's the best thing ever. I know, it's so cute. I don't want to use it. So cute. It's so cute. Like so. Anyway, just so anybody knows, like whenever she goes like out of state, I tell her to bring me a pen from wherever she goes like she could probably like go out of the states and like it's not even anything else fancy that i want i want a pen yeah she wants a pen. i want a pen i was like i'm a cheap friend i was like i just want a pen so and then they she brought me this gigantic i don't have it here it's in the it's in the draw i have this oh, gigantic the texas, texas the texas pen <laughs> it was like the best thing ever it's like everything's bigger in texas so she brought me this gigantic like pen but uh <laughs> Yeah, uh, Justin says, how come I don't see you at Northeast anymore? In sad face. I got fired. <laughs> oh, no. Back where I'm fired. No. Oh. <laughs> so uh, if you want if you want to see Casey at places, tweet at the promotions and tell them. Tell Let them the fire. Do not tweet at the promotions. <laughs> no, no, not her. Like, just like. I'll make I'll not, make a list. <laughs> not that. Like, but yeah, if there's like certain people, just put it out there. Because I always tell the fans, like, you know. We make noise, and sometimes we see things that uh, can happen. So, uh, Chucky said, "ICW Newark, do I smell a Kirk sign?" Nikki's in the chat. Hello, <laughs> Justin said, "Bullshit, he's cracking up." Uh, anybody else? Let me see. Uh, Steve, thank you so much. So my eye makeup is, uh, yeah. So, but anyway, uh, so we're gonna end this podcast so she can get ready, so she can head out to H2O. So make sure you're watching H2O tonight. Will the Kirks have a lot of gold after this weekend? You have to tune into H2O tonight to find out. I hope so. So, so I feel like a lot of photos possibly could be happening. Maybe if uh, Brandon wins this match tonight. So definitely tune into that. So Casey, thank you so much. I'm so sorry that this happened with the crap. <laughs> you know what? This wouldn't be like us if something like went and just like made it a little inconvenient. Oh, so. yeah. Just, yeah. just, just. Just, just a little. So, but congratulations again. Like you know, big weekend. I'm so glad. Thanks for coming back. And uh, yeah, so I will definitely see you soon. Thank you, fans. Also, I know a bunch of people just tuned in now. So I'm gonna merge eventually. Hopefully tonight, I'll merge the two interviews together. I'm so sorry that it crashed. Also, um, but yeah. So support the Kirks. So hi, Brandon. <laughs> He's like, you just went like, like this. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> Well, anyway, thank you guys for tuning in. I love you so much. You guys know the drill. Stay safe. Support independent wrestling. And I'll talk to you guys soon. Have a good night. Bye. Bye.